Welcome to the second part of our discussion about reactions and stoichiometry. Okay, so we have here formula weight, and when we said formula weight, that is the sum of atomic weights in atomic mass unit or AMU of all atoms in compounds chemical formula or compounds formula. For example, we have sodium chloride, nickel chloride hydrate, water, and aspirin. So we are going to take note or we are going to get the formula weight of each of the following chemicals. Okay, so how are we going to get it again from the definition itself? That is the sum of the atomic weights in atomic mass unit. So let's say for example, we have our sodium chloride and ACL. So how many sodium do we have? One. How many chlorine do we have? One. Okay. Multiply to the atomic weight. Please refer to the atomic weight posted in our learning management system so that we will have a uniform or uniformity in our atomic weights. So the atomic weight of sodium is 22.99 and the atomic weight of fluorine is 35.45. So 22.99 times 1 is 22.99. 35.45 times 1 is 35.45. 35.45 plus 22.99 is 58.44 AMU. So this is the formula weight of sodium chloride. Now for nickel hydrate, we have NiCl2 and water. So we have nickel 1, chlorine is 2. Hydrogen is 2, oxygen is 1. Okay, so what will be the atomic weight of nickel? That is 58.69. Chlorine is 35.45. Water is what? Uh, hydrogen is 1.01. Oxygen is 16.00. So 58.69 times 1 is. 58.69 2 times 35.45 is uh, 70.90 1.01 times 2 is 2.02 .02, and 16 times 1 is 16 so we add here 58.69 70.90 2.02 and 16 it gives us 147.60 1 AMU. Okay. How about for water? Chemical formula of water is H2O. So, hydrogen is 2. Oxygen is 1. Hydrogen 1.01. Oxygen 16. So, 1.01 times 2 is 2.02. .02, and oxygen is 16 times 1 is equals to 16. 16 plus 2.02 is 18.02 AMU. Now, how about for aspirin? C9 H8 O4. How many carbon? 9. How many hydrogen? 8. How many oxygen? 4. Okay. So, carbon is 12.01. Hydrogen is 1.01. Oxygen is 16. 12.09 times 9 is 108.09. 8 times 1.01 is 8.08. 16 times 4 is 64. 64 plus 8.08 and 108.09 gives us 180.17 AMU. Okay, so this is how you are going to get, okay, the uh, formula weights, okay, the number of elements present, of each element present, multiply to the atomic weight, and then get the sum, that will be your atom, uh, formula weight, okay, again, 
when we said formula weight, it refers to the sum of atomic weights in atomic mass unit of all atoms present in a compound. Now we have what we call formula weight and molecular weight. We are going to use formula weight to indicate that that uh, uh, formula weight can be used for both ionic and molecular compounds or covalent compounds. However, if you are going to refer molecular weight, it pertains to molecular compounds only. Okay? Now, what is mole? When we said mole, the amount of substance that contain a, uh, as many atoms, molecules, or ions are there as there are atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon. Take note that the number of the formula unit is a mole is known as Avogadro's number. And Avogadro's number has been measured experimentally with a value of 6.0221499 times 10 raised to the 23rd power or simply 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power units per mole. Okay, so please take note of that. Now we have what we call molar mass. Molar mass is the formula weight of substance expressed in grams. Uh, how are we going to get molar mass? Uh, molar mass is basically the same thing as your formula weight. However, formula weight is expressed in atomic mass unit while molar mass is expressed in grams per mole or simply grams. Okay, so how are we going to get the molar mass of glucose and urea? So this is how we're going to get it. Okay, so example, our glucose. C6H12, C6H12, 06. Okay. Ilan po ang ating carbon? 6. Ilan po ang ating hydrogen? 12. Ilan po ang ating oxygen? 6. Okay? So, 6 times 12.01 for carbon, hydrogen is 1.01, and 16 for oxygen. 12.01 times 6 is 72. 0 0.06 12 times 1.12 at uh, 12 times 1.01 1 .01 is 12.12 okay 12.01 12 times 6 is 96 okay so 16 times 6 is 96 so we get the sum of this this is equals to 180 Point 0.18 grams per mole. Therefore, we can said or we can say that uh, one mole of glucose is equals to 180.18 grams. Now, how about for urea? NH2 to CO. Okay. How many nitrogen? One. How many hydrogen? Four. I'm sorry. Our nitrogen is two. Okay. How many hydro uh, nitrogen? Two. Hydrogen is four. Carbon is zero. A uh, one. Ano ba? Okay, carbon is 1, oxygen is 1, nitrogen is 14.01, hydrogen is 1.01, carbon is 12.01, oxygen is 16, 14.01 times 2 is 28.02. 4.1.01 is equals to 4.04. 12 times 12.01 times 1 is 
16 times 1 is 16. We get the sum of this. This is equals to 60.1 grams per mole. Therefore, we can say that 1 mole of urea is equals to 60.1 grams. Okay? So that is how we are going to get the molar mass. Okay, and the relationship you know, between the mass and the number of moles. Okay, so let's have an example. Calculate the number of moles of water in 36 grams. So how are we going to solve for this? Let's get first the molar mass of water. So that will be H2O 1, 2 Ito ay 1.01 .01. This is 16 So 16 uh, 2.02 That is equals to 18.02 Okay Grams So 1 mole Of water is Equals to 18.02 Grams So we have now 36 grams of water. Okay. Times. So we have how many mole how many grams are there in one mole? 18.02. 18.02 grams of water. Okay. One mole of water. So we are going to cancel the same unit and we are left with moles of water which is the required or the asked. So 36 divide, uh, times 1 is 36 divided by 18.02 will give us 1.9977802.44 or simply that is equivalent to 2 moles of water. Okay? So, big sabihin, 36 grams of water is equivalent to 2 moles of water. Okay? So, we have here another examples. Uh, calculate the number of moles no, of 40 grams sodium hydroxide. Calculate the number of moles of 20 grams aluminum oxide. How many grams are present in 2.5 moles of urea? And how many grams of pentane are present in 3.3 uh, moles? Okay, so we are going to solve for it. So number one now is how to calculate the number of moles of uh, sodium hydroxide. So that will be NaOH. So, first things first is to get the molar mass. So, sodium is 1. Oxygen is 1. Hydrogen is 1. Sodium, 22.99. Oxygen is 16. Hydrogen is 1.01. .01. So, that is 22.99, 16, and 1.01. .01. 22.99 plus 16 plus 20, uh, 1.01 gives us 40 grams. So, ibig sabihin, 1 mole of sodium hydroxide is equals to 40 grams. So, the, the question is, how many, uh, calculate the number of moles of 40 grams sodium hydroxide. Therefore, the answer will be 1 mole. Okay? So, 1 mole. Okay. Next is calculate the number of moles of 20 grams sodium oxide. I'm sorry, so uh, aluminum oxide. So first is to get the molar mass of our sodium oxide. So 3 times 16 and 2 times the molar at, uh, atomic weight of aluminum is 53, uh, 28, uh, 26.98. No? 
98. So, 16 times 3 is 48. 26.98 times 2 is 53.96. We get the sum that is 101.96 grams. Therefore, we can say that 1 mole of aluminum oxide is equals to 101.96 grams. So, meron daw po tayong Okay. So, we have daw 20 grams aluminum oxide times 101.96 grams aluminum oxide 1 mole. Okay, so cancel, cancel. 20 times 1 is 20 divided by uh, 101.96 is 0 0.1961553555 or that is equivalent to 0 0.20 moles of aluminum oxide. Okay guys, take note. In order for us to maintain the uniformity of our answer, we are going to express our answer in two, two decimal places. Okay, so kagaya po nito, naka two decimal place po tayo, as well as this one. Okay, so the next one is, the problem is how many grams are present in 2.5 moles of urea? So this time, we are given the number of moles. 2.5 moles, o uh, 2.5 daw ang moles ng urea natin. 2.5 moles of urea. So this time, we are going to look for the number of mass. So how are we going to compute for it? Take note again, the molar mass of urea. So uh, a while ago, we just computed the molar mass of urea and we said that 1 mole of urea is equals to 60.1 grams, right? That's what we compute a while ago. Alright, so if we have 2.5 moles, so that will be 2.5 moles urea. Okay, divided by 60.1 grams urea. Here is 1 mole of urea. So cancel, cancel. 2.5 times 60.1 gives us 150.25 grams of urea. Okay, therefore, 2.5 moles of urea contains 150.25 grams of urea. Okay, so 2.5 moles of urea is equivalent to 150.25 grams of urea. Now, how about for the last uh, problem or the sample, we have 3.3 uh, moles of pentane. So, pentane is C5, C5H10. So, that will, that will be 10 times 1.01. Oh, let's, let's delete first the, the other one written in the board. Okay, so that will be C5H10. So carbon, 5 times 12.01. Hydrogen is 10 times 1.01. Okay, 12.01 times 5 is 60.5. Okay, that is 60.5. 10 times 1.01 is 10.10. .10. So, 60.5 plus 10.10, that's gonna be 70.15 grams. So, we can say that 1 mole of pentane is equals to 70.15 grams. So, meron daw po tayong 3.3 moles. So, 3.3 moles 
C5H10. So, ano yung nasa baba natin? 1 mole of C5H10. We have here 70.15 grams. So, cancel mole, cancel mole. 3.3 times 70.15 divided by 1. That will be 224.48 grams of pentane. Okay? So, big sabihin, yung daw pong 3.3 moles natin ng pentane is equivalent to 244.8 grams of pentane. Okay? So, that is how we are going to compute for our molar mass. And that is how we are going to get the number of grams per mole. Okay? I hope you get it and it's clear to all. Okay, now how about this one? How many moles of sodium ions in 5.63 grams of sodium sulfate? Okay, so let's solve for it. And the question is, how many or cal uh, yeah, how many or calculate no? How many moles pala? How many moles of sodium ions are in 5.63 grams of sodium sulfate. So, the first thing to do is what? Okay. The first thing to do is to compute for the molar mass of sodium sulfate. So, what will be the molar mass of sodium sulfate? So, let's compute the molar mass of sodium sulfate. Okay. So, sodium SO. Sodium is 2. Sulfur is 1, oxygen is 4. So, sodium is 22.99. Sulfur is 32.07. Oxygen is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. 32.07 times 1 is 32.07. 22.99 times 2 is 45.98. So, let's add it. It will give us 142.05 grams. So, take note guys of the balance equation. So, we have sodium plus sulfate will give us sodium sulfate. So, we should have here two to make our equation balance. Okay, now. So, how are we going to solve for it? So, meron daw tayong 5.63 grams. So, 5.63 grams sodium sulfate times, okay, how many moles of sodium sulfate? Ah, I'm sorry. Uh, how many grams are there in 1 mole of sodium sulfate? So, 142. So, we have 1 mole of sodium sulfate divided by 142.05 grams. Okay, times how many moles of sodium do we have? 2 moles. 2 moles of sodium. Where did we get the 2 moles of sodium in our balance equation? Okay? So, you are going to refer on your balance equation. How many moles of sodium sulfate so that we can cancel this one? 1 mole. 1 mole of sodium sulfate. Can we now cancel, uh, can we now cancel this one? Yes. Cancel this one. And of course, this one also. So we have moles of sodium. So that will be 5.63. Okay. 5.63 times 2 divided by 142.05 times 1 will give us okay, 0 0.0793. Okay? So, this will give us 0 
9, 2, 6, 7, 8, 6, 3, 4, 3, or simply 0 0.08 moles. 0 0.08 moles of sodium. Okay? So, that is how we are going to compute for our... Uh, So we are going to compute for our uh, what you call this uh, number of sodium ions present in the problem. Okay. So how about number two? The problem says how many moles of hydrogen is required? to have 1.05 grams of sodium sulfate. Ah, I'm sorry, of uh, sulfuric acid. Okay. So again, how are we going to solve for that? The first thing to do is to compute for the molar mass of our sodium sulfate. So what will be the molar mass of sodium sulfate? We have... H2SO4 How many hydrogen? 2 Sulfur 1 Oxygen 4 So 1.01 .01 times Sulfur is 32 0.07 Oxygen is 16 So this will give us 2.02 32.07 And 2 Oh Wait, yeah, 64. So that is 98.09 grams. Now take note guys that our equation is H2 plus SO4 will give us H2SO4. Okay, so ang mass down ng ating sulfuric acid is 1.05 grams. Now, we are looking for the number of mass of hydrogen, no? Uh, number of moles of hydrogen, rather, required to have 1.05 grams of sulfuric acid. So, how are we going to solve for that? So, we have 1.05 grams sulfuric acid times... A okay, 1 mole sulfuric acid over 98.08, uh, 09 rather, 98.09 grams sulfuric acid times how many mole of hydrogen? 1. Okay. How many mole of sulfuric acid? 1 So cancel same units Cancel same units So that will be 1.05 Times 1 times 1 Divided by 98.09 Will give us 0 0.1 ah, zero, I'm sorry 0 0.0107 Or that will be 0 0.01 moles of hydrogen. Okay? 0 0.01 moles of hydrogen. So, let's see. So, having said that we have 0 0.01 moles of hydrogen, and if you're going to get the number of grams, that will be uh, 0 0.01 mole of hydrogen times okay, 2.02 grams hydrogen, 1 mole. Okay, that will be equal to 
0.02 no grams okay so 0.02 grams now how about for sulfur or sulfate so let's see how are we going to arrive no if we have really the law of conservation of mass So again, the same thing, we have 1.05 gram sulfuric acid times 1 mole sulfuric acid over 98.09 gram sulfuric acid times we have 1 mole sul uh, sulfate okay, and 1 mole of Sulfuric acid. So, saan po nang galing yung 1 mole of sulfuric acid in our balance equation? Saan po nang galing 1 mole of sulfate? Doon din po. Okay? So, cancel same units. Cancel same units. This will give us, okay, uh, this will give us exactly the same thing. 0 0.01 moles, okay, of sulfuric acid. However, we're going to multiply it to okay, what? Uh, 1 mole of sulfate and we have here 96.07 grams of sulfate. So, cancel, cancel. That will be 0 0.01 times 96.07 will give us Okay, uh, 96 0 0.0107 times Ah, yeah, yeah, that is 0 0.0107 pala Okay, 0 0.0107 times 96.07 will give us this will give us 1.023 at uh, 27 no 27949 or simply 1.03 so ang sulfate daw natin is 1.03 grams so 1.03 plus 0 0.02 is equals to 1.05 so again we have here the what we called no we have followed here what we call the law of conservation of mass the mass of the reactant no the mass of the reactant is the same mass as of our product so 1.02 uh, 0 0.02 grams plus 1.03 grams is equivalent or equal to 1.05 Okay, so that is how we solve for it. Okay, so how about this one, grams to molecules? So we have now a tablet of aspirin. No, a tablet of aspirin contains zero, uh, 0 0.360 grams of aspirin. How many mole, molecules of aspirin? are present so re remember guys that one mole no remember guys that one mole is equals to 1.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd molecules so we have now 0 0.360 grams of aspirin Okay, the question is, how are we going to get the number of molecules? Then, the first thing to do is, again, to convert z uh, 0 0.360 grams of aspirin into number of moles. So, how are we going to get that? Definitely, we are going to compute for the molar mass. So, we have C9H8O4. Oh, na-compute na natin kanina ang aspirin. Tama ba? 
na compute na ba? Parang hindi pa. O sige, let's compute. C9 times 12.01 H8 times 1.01 O4 times 16 16 times 4 is 64 8 times 1.01 is 8.08 12.01 times 9 is 108.09 we got the sum, we get the sum that is 180.17 grams per mole. So we have now 0 0.360 grams aspirin. Oh wait lang, I'll, I will make it better. Okay, so we have 0 0.360 grams aspirin. times 1 mole of aspirin is equals to 180.17 grams aspirin. Okay. Times 6.02 uh, why? I'm sorry guys, why is it a uh, 1? I just figured it out. So sorry. That should be 6. Okay. 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd molecules. Over 1 mole of aspirin. So cancel. Cancel, cancel, cancel. That will be 0 0.360 times 1 times 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd divided by 180.17 gives us 1.20 times 10 raised to the 21st power molecules of aspirin. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, that is the number of molecules present in three point, uh, 0 0.360 grams of aspirin. Okay? So, the next one is, yan, the stoichiometry. When we said stoichiometry, that is, guys, the relationship or the mass relationship, okay, in chemical reactions, where A can be converted into B. Take note, ha, take note, no grams of A converted to moles of A you are going to use the molar mass as the conversion factor. Moles of A to moles of B, from moles to moles, take note this, from moles to moles, use the coefficients in balance equation. O, kaya, kaya mahalaga ang ating balance equation. From moles of B to grams of B, that's basically the same thing, use the molar mass as conversion factor. Again, kapag mo, uh, grams to moles, use the molar mass for conversion. From moles of A to moles of B, use the coefficient. No? No, use the coefficient that can be found in the balance equation. From moles of B to mo, grams of B, then you are going to use the molar mass as our Conversion factor. Okay. For example, how many grams of nitrogen are required to produce 7.5 grams of ammonia given the following balance equation? Ayan. Pag mga gantong pagkakataon that you have already the balance equation, then maganda yun, no? hindi ka na magbabalance. Pero what if ibabalance pa 
mahirap yun. Okay? The reason why, you have to know how to balance chemical equation. So, let's solve this one. Okay? Again, the, the problem is how many grams of nitrogen are required to produce 7.5 grams of ammonia. So, ang ating daw uh, balance equation ay N2 plus 3H2 will give us 2 moles of ammonia. Okay? Will give us 2 moles of ammonia. So, anong una natin gagawin? Compute for the molar mass of ammonia. So, what will be the molar mass of ammonia? Okay, so NH3 3 times 1.01 uh, That will be 1 times 14.01 3.03 Ano ba yan? Burahin natin, ayusin natin Three point zero three fourteen point zero one. This gives us seventeen point zero four grams, no, per mole. Now again, the question is, how many grams of nitrogen are required to produce seven point five grams of ammonia? Okay, so alam na po natin that our uh, ammonia is 17.04 grams. Okay? Yung ammonia daw natin is 7.5 uh, 7 grams. So, we are going to look for the mass of our nitro nitrogen. So, how are we going to solve for that? Oh, listen guys, very well, how to listen very well. But don't worry, we will have, I will have a reinforcement lecture so that I can discuss this to you in our synchronous session if if para sa synchronous session madali na po tayo so how are we going to solve for it we have 7.5 grams of what ammonia times 1 mole of ammonia can be proud of me guys because I am now starting to know how to use this pen light and I can write legibly na. No? Anong baba? 17.04 tama. No? Times. Okay? How many moles of nitrogen do we have? One. Uh, no one. Diba? Ito yung balance natin. One mole of nitrogen. How many moles of ammonium? Two. I'm sorry, ammonia. Two. Okay. Dito na ba natatapos? Hindi pa. Kailangan nating i-multiply sa 1 mole of nitrogen is equals to 28.02. Sir, so, saan po nang galing yung 28.02 grams ng nitrogen? So, that's basically N2. 2 times 13.01. That is 28.02 grams. Sir, so, bakit N2? Diatomic? Diatomic. Okay? So, cancel same unit. So we have ze ze seven, seven point five times one times one times twenty eight point zero two divided by seventeen point zero four times two gives us. Ah, sige, compute. Seven point fifty times twenty eight point zero two divided by seventeen point zero four. Seven 
seven point fifty plus or times twenty eight point zero two divided by forty or uh, seventeen point zero four times two gives us a six point seventeen. Okay. So, ibig sabihin daw, we have 6.17 grams of nitrogen. Okay. So, for nitrogen is 6.17 grams. Now, how about for hydrogen? Okay. Isolve natin natin. No? Isolve natin natin para makita natin if we follow the law of conservation of mass. The mass of the reactant must be the same mass of the product. So, how? Sir, paano po yun? No? Paano po yun, sir? Basically, the same thing. So, we have 7.5 grams ammonia 1 mole of ammonia 17.04 grams of ammonia Times, times what? Ilang mole ng hydrogen? Meron, 3. 3 moles of hydrogen. Ilang moles ng ammonia? 2. 2 moles of ammonia. Times, okay, 1 mole of hydrogen is equals to what? 2.02. Bakit? So, by, katulad nito, H2. 2 times 1.01 .01 is equals to 2.02 .02 grams. Okay? So, again, cancel same units. So, that will be, sige, compute ulit, 7.50 times 3 times 2.02 .02 divided by 17.04 times 2. This is equals to 1.33 grams of hydrogen. Sige nga, tingnan po natin. If we arrived with the law of conservation of mass, this is 1.33 grams. So, 6.17 plus 1.33, 7.5. Correct. 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 5 points. 5 points. Okay? So, I hope you got it. Next examples. Ah, by the way, I will show you the step by step, no, uh, computation on how we arrive with six point seventeen. Do you want it? Well, of course, yes. No. So, na yung unang nating gagawin. Ang unang nung gagawin, no, is to convert, convert. 7.5 grams of ammonia to moles. So, that will be 7.5 grams ammonia Okay, and then the answer this will be 0 0.44014084851 mole of urea. Okay, that's the first step. The second step is Moles of urea, ah, moles of ammonia, I'm sorry. Moles of ammonia to moles of nitrogen. 
Ano sabi natin pag moles to moles? Use the coefficient in the balance equation. So, that will be this one. 0.44014084511 mole ammonia times times what? 2 moles ammonia 1 mole of nitrogen. Sir, saan po ito nang galing? Balance equation. So, this, the answer will be, here is 0 0.220 0 0.704225 moles of nitrogen. So, now, the last step is moles of nitrogen to grams of nitrogen. So this one, 0 0.220007042225 mole nitrogen times what? Times uh, 1 mole of nitrogen is equals to 28.02 of nitrogen. Patingin nyo natin, 0. 2200704225 times 28.62 will give us 6.70 okay, grams of nitrogen. Okay, guys, take note. We are going to round off our answer in the final answer. Now, rounding off of answer will only be done in the final answer. I repeat, rounding off of answers will be done only on the final answer. Uulitin ko, rounding off of your final answer or rounding off will be done only on the final answer. Okay? So I hope it's clear. Okay, so let's have these examples. So, what mass of aluminum oxide is required to prepare 27 grams of aluminum? I repeat, what mass of aluminum oxide is needed to prepare or required to prepare 27 grams of aluminum? So, we have the uh, uh, equation Al2O3 electrolysis. Uh, now, we'll split into aluminum and oxygen. But the question is, is the equation balance? Hindi. Okay. So, what will be the balance equation? The balance equation will be... So, I will write na the balance equation. Check if your balance equation is correct. Okay. So, this is our balance equation. Now, the question is, what mass of aluminum oxide is required to prepare 27 grams of aluminum? So, how are we going to solve for that? So, we have to compute first the molar mass of aluminum oxide. Tama. So, aluminum 2 times 26.98. Oxygen is 3 times... 16. So, 26.98 is 53. Ah, 26.98 times 2 is 53.96 and 16 times 3 is 48. So, that will be 101.96 grams. So, how are we going to solve for this one? So, again, we have 27 grams. 27 grams of aluminum. Times, no, one mole of aluminum is equals to what? 26.98 grams of aluminum. So, saan po ito nang galing? Ayan, no, 26.98 ang isang aluminum, no? 
Naku po, inaantok na ata ang batang ito. Gumising ka, sinasabi ko sa'yo. Okay? Next, moles to moles. No, moles to moles. Ilang moles ng aluminum oxide? Dalawa. Ilang moles ng aluminum? Ha? Ilang moles ng aluminum? Four. Ano? Oh. Makakansal mo tong grams. Makakansal mo tong grams of aluminum. Moles of aluminum. Moles of aluminum. Oh. Ano na talaga sa'yo? Moles of aluminum oxide. Ang kailangan mo yung grams ng aluminum oxide. So, molar mass. Oh, one mole aluminum oxide equals to 101.96 grams aluminum oxide. Oh, compute. The answer will be 51.02 grams of aluminum oxide. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan daw natin ng 51.02 grams of aluminum oxide so that you will be able to produce 27 grams of your aluminum. Alright? Next, number 2. Example number 2 is how many grams of each carbon dioxide and urea are produced from 0.83 moles of urea. So we have here our equation. Okay, so that is already balance equation, no? That is already the balance equation. So let's write it here. Okay, so we are going to compute for the moles of uh, grams of carbon dioxide and grams of ammonia. Okay, so computein po muna natin ang molar mass ni ammonia, NH3, 1 times 14, no? 1 times 14.01 plus... 3 times 1.01 is equals to 17.04 grams per mole. Okay. How about for carbon dioxide? 1 times 12.01 plus 2 times 16.00 is equals to 44.01 grams per mole. Okay, so let's start the computation. So we have for carbon dioxide first. Okay, so we have 0 0.83 mole ammonia uh, urea, I'm sorry. Times 1 mole of carbon dioxide, 1 mole of urea. O, oh, saan po ito nang galing? Ito. Saan po ito nang galing? Ito. So, times 1 mole of carbon dioxide is equals to 44.01 grams carbon dioxide. So, cancel tayo ng unit. Cancel. 
cancel 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 okay so 0 0.83 times 1 times 44.01 gives us 36.53 grams of carbon dioxide. How about for ammonia? So basically the same thing, 0 0.83 moles of urea times 1 mole of, I'm sorry, times 2 moles of urea, ammonia, rather. Ito nga, Mark, ano ba? 2 moles of ammonia over 1 mole of urea times times what? 17.04 grams urea ammonia over 1 mole ammonia so we can cancel same units moles of urea moles of urea moles of ammonia moles of ammonia so this will be 0 0.83 times 2 times 17.04 gives us 28.29 grams of ammonia okay so that is how we are going to solve for this. Okay. Now we have what we call limiting reagents. What do we mean by limiting reagents? When we said limiting reagents, that is the reactant that is used up first no, in the equation. That is the reactant that is used up first in the equation. So, let's put it in this way. Okay. Let's put it in this way. Para mas madali po natin siyang maintindihan. Again, when you said limiting reagents, that is the first reactant that is used up first in the equation. Let's say for example, no? Let's say for example, you have six slices of cheese. Well, Forgive me if I can't draw legibly because I don't have talent in drawing. Ten. I have here six slices of cheese. Okay, and I have no uh, eight pieces of tasty bread or eight slices of bread. Yan. So, I have 8 slices of bread. Okay. When I add this to, I can form how many sandwich? I can form, you know, 4 sandwich. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, what will be the ratio? 1 is to 2. Okay. In order to make four sandwiches. Okay? So I have tasty, I have tasty, and cheese. Cheese, cheese, cheese.
tasty tasty okay so our ratio is one is to two one slice of cheese is to two slices of bread in order to make up four sandwiches now the question is between cheese and bread which is our limiting reagent ano yung unang naubos ang unang naubos sa yo is our bread okay so before the reaction we can say that before reaction so cheese and bread in our sandwich before reaction we have six slices of cheese we have eight slices of bread after the reaction we have two you know remaining kasi naalis na siya wala 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 okay so we have two slices of cheese remaining and we have zero slices of bread but we were able to come up with four sandwich okay in this case our bread no in this case nasa na yung pansulat natin nawala yan in this case bread is our limiting reagent kasi siya po yung unang naubos okay bread is our limiting reagent kasi siya po yung unang naubos now let's put it in this way Suppose that 12 grams of carbon is mixed with 64 grams of the following takes place. So we have carbon. Oh. Kapit lang guys, matatapos na. Carbon plus your oxygen no, to give us carbon dioxide. So let's put, let's have a table. So we have before reaction in moles. Uh, before reaction in mass. Okay. After reaction in moles. After reaction in mass. We have carbon, we have oxygen, and we have carbon dioxide. So, how many uh, carbon do we have before the reaction? 12 grams. Oxygen is 64 grams. Basically, if you're going to compute 12 grams of carbon, that is equals to 1 mole. Right? Kasi 12.01, so that's 0 0.99 something. So, when we can uh, round it off, that's 1 mole. How about for 64 grams? That's basically 2 moles. So, bakit po, sir, nasabi mong 2 moles? Kasi 1 mole of oxygen is equals to... I don't know. Uh, yeah, 1 mole of oxygen is equals to 16. Uh, 14. No? E diatomic siya. 32. Right? So, we have here 0. 0. Now, take note guys that kailangan mo ng 1 mole of carbon and 1 mole of oxygen to produce 1 mole of carbon dioxide. Kaya para po nasabing 1 mole, yung coefficient tala dito, 1. No? 1 mole of carbon, 1 mole of oxygen. So, ilang pong moles ng carbon na natira? Wala na. Kasi isa lang yung meron ka. Ilang moles po ng oxygen ang kailangan mo? Isa. So, meron ka pang isang natitira. And that is accounting to 32 grams. No? And, ilang mole po ng carbon dioxide ang na-produce natin? One. And that is equivalent to, uh, yeah, that is equivalent to 44.01 grams. So, paano po nakuha yun? 2 times 16, 1 times 12.01. So, 16 times 2 is, ha, 32. And, 12.1 times 12, uh, 1 is, 1 pala ito, 12.01. So, 4, 4.01 grams per mole. Okay, so, ibig sabihin, which is our limiting reagent? Carbon, no? 
siya po yung unang naubos in this equation. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, in other words, you have to remember pa din on how to convert moles to grams and mass to moles. I guess this will be the last topic. We have the percent yield. Okay? Kapag po sinabi natin percent yield, that is uh, the yield, uh, uh, actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. Okay? So, pag naman po sinabi natin actual yield, that is the mass of the product formed in a chemical reaction and recovered in the laboratory. So, that is the mass of your experiment. So, kagawin po ito sa laboratory nyo with Ms. Rovi. And we have theoretical yield, which is the mass of the product that should come or that should flow from according to the stoichiometry of the balance equation. Okay? So, let's say for example, meron po tayo ditong example. No? Suppose we react 32 grams of methanol with excess carbon monoxide to obtain 58 grams of acetic acid. So, our theoretical yield daw is 60 grams. No, our actual yield daw is 57.8. Again, our formula is actual divided by theoretical. So, actual is 57.8 divided by theoretical, which is 60. Again, yung actual mo came from your experiment and your theoretical is came from your stoichiometric problem. So, that will be 57.8 times, uh, I'm sorry, 57.8 divided by 60 times 100 will give you 96.33. So, 96.33 is your percent yield in this equation. Okay? So, thank you for listening. I hope you learn and don't worry guys because we will have a reinforcement lecture on this topic. Thank you and stay safe everyone. Have a nice day.